Okay. All right. What's all this thing? I fucked up my stream time. There we go. Now it's fixed. Beautiful music. See my thing again. Here we go. Second playthrough. That way people come in. Just, or I didn't know this was here. Anyway, um, starting again. Um, my own. Now, I did play this already. Back in November is when I last played it. Um, and pretty good. Pretty good. I think this time I want to do, um, uh, what you call it? Inland Empire and Shivers. I've read that that's very, uh, very, uh, opening, eye opening way to play the game. I did Inland Empire last time, just on a, on a, on a goof as a gaff, and it was pretty cool. So, but this time I want to do shivers just because like Inland Empire was my main my main skill last time. So, um, but I will I will keep. Um, the, both of these just be like that. it's real balanced, real balanced, real balanced character here. I'm very emotionally sensitive, and I'm also muscular very manly i don't know let's see i'm gonna so inland empire and shivers and last time i was a sorry cop so this time i'll try being a superstar cop so let's see how that goes hopefully this isn't too low <laughs> i don't want it to be too low but we'll just see let's just get it over with in my uh, set signature. Sorry, Inland Empire was my signature last time. I'll do Shivers this time. Shivers. <coughs> cool for city lovers, the wisest of the street wise, the genuinely supernatural. Shivers come when the temperature drops and you become more keenly aware of your surroundings. It enables you to hear the city itself, to truly belong to the streets. It is a supernatural ability. Old wrongs play out in present time. Scenes across the city happen in front of you. But who is speaking to you? At high levels, shivers may make you seem mad to the outside world. As you listen to the city, you don't listen to others. Your superiors may begin to worry. With the low shivers, though you will seldom hear the city speaking to you, and if you cannot hear it, how can you ever save it? Real shit. Um, I really don't care for the rest of the physique attribute or rest of the physique skills i just care about shivers i don't care about anything else and if, if anything psyche was my favorite tree i liked all of these um logic is i don't <laughs> these are gonna be so bad fuck it <sighs> it's gonna be so bad uh okay so yeah shivers Confirm. Go. The Furies are at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest water 
if deep enough, can drown. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious for men, Cine. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. Simply keep on non-existing. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. What was that about the ex-something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce, it's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness. No. Of the meat thing. No, I wanted to know about the ex something. Ex love. Ex tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of a logic zone. Allons-y, never let me go. No, I, no, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? I do. Let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself, got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? I'm sauced up. Fear and apprehension. You should ask us out there first. Wait, I did this to myself? Yes. Your one disco mother. Tell me, what's waiting for me? There's this giant ball there. An evil apes. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out. On a giant ball. How big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. And this duking it out, I'm hearing about, what's that? Trying for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. <laughs> The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. That sounds like something I would like to do. Let's go. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meat around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment. Your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. Hell yeah. I'm a champ. Okay, mother help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. Please, no, I changed my mind. Take me back to the formless, disembodied nothing. No, I am not scared. I am a champion. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. Who am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. Mm. 
There he is. It's him. John Disco Elysium. Yeah, stretch it out, buddy. Stretch it out. Yep. Just... Just wake yourself up. It's all good. Um... The pants on. Clear cut trousers. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Fish them out. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Nice. Um, what's the button to like? Uh, highlight literally everything around you. Tab? Just tab. You know, perma hold tab basically this entire game. Let's get this. The jacket. Disco ass blazer. Hell yeah, brother. He's fine. He's fine. Just let him. Let him soak it in. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. Get the shirt on. White satin shirt. We'll leave the... We'll leave the expression for a second. Um, let's check this shit out. This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Looks like someone tore at the tape while the song was playing. This reel to reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Green shoe, left foot. Okay. Try to get the tie, this hopefully fan not has fucking two die. Switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange <laughs> world. <laughs> this is this is so this is not gonna happen, but let's try it anyway. You reach out yep. to grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. Oh no. This is oh. bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving for quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. That's fine. Finally, the pressure recedes. Yeah. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. Let's pull on the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Let's go. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Oh. Uh, this is a bad idea, but let's just do it anyway. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. It's just a little hangover-induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. Bring it little on. Little black spots dance on your retinas. It's almost pleasurable. Almost. Well, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, where's my tie, man? The homie. Necktie is adorned with a garish pattern. It's disturbingly vivid. Somehow you feel as if it would be wrong to ever take it off. It's a friend now. You will be betrayed if you change it for some boring scarf. Oh, I'll uh, keep that on. Um, check out the window. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. Assess the damage. 
The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Assess the size of the it impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Maybe it wasn't me? You mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? No. I should go and get that shoe. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Oh. Seems like your green snakeskin shoe is missing its partner. You should find it before you go venturing into the wild unknown. Two shoes are better than one. Unite them again. Okay, let's, let's let's just do this. Get this over with. <clears throat> a mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. <laughs> Hot water sprays from the base, and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? Nothing? Really? All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in, has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. Let's wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. Maybe I should touch it first, make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah. There is definitely something wrong with it. What? What's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. I'm sorry. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. Honk, it doesn't honk. appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. At least my tongue is okay. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Now we wipe in the mirror. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? <laughs> of course I do. It's, um, it's some kind of superstar. I think I'm a superstar. It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I think it might be because I'm a superstar. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, this is what superstars do. Keep making the face. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Superstardom? You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here, it looks like a cadaverous spasm. Check for pulse. You find no sign of life on your swollen neck. However, putting your hand on your chest reveals an irregular heartbeat. You appear to be alive for now. Uh, dig deep into your mind to look at the source of the expression with a 8%. Like the rest okay. of you. I it rolled comes two ones. from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Okay. Let's try to just stop it. No, let's not. Let's keep it like this. That's some superstar shit. We gotta... We're superstarring. Alright. Come on. Come on, Harry. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Let's go. Get this shoe back. Ilinka, negative 44 centigrade, no, centigrade snowstorm. There's something on the table. Some money. Smell of the sea makes you dizzy. Gust the briny wind washes over you. There you go. Got the shoes back. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Nice. They may have lost some of their luster over the years, but these green crocodile leather shoes fit you perfectly. Awesome watchtower heels. Heels ridiculously high. Allergen watermarks. Looks like someone skinned this blazer off some long extinct disco animal. It has an enigmatic it has an enigmatic white rectangle on the back and the right sleeve. This white satin shirt used to be fancy. It used to really catch the light. Now it smells like someone took a piss in the armpits. A real statement to wear, unsavory odor. These golden brown trousers are flare cut. Normally bell bottom trousers would be boot cut. These are far from normal. There is someone's piss soaked cum stained party pants. <laughs> Jesus. Tight around the thighs, tight around the crotch. <laughs> what? Need a room number one. For the tile already. Okay. Cool. Let's get back inside. It is cold out here. Hello, officer. Arch. Hello, Klaus. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Officer? Am I military personnel? Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief executive officer, right? The young woman shakes her head slowly. Okay. Chief Technical Officer? No, you're a police officer, sir. Goddamn right I'm a policeman and don't you forget it. Okay, cool. I won't. She means it. She wouldn't defy authority, however sweaty and bloated it may look. No need to be alarmed. I was just getting into character, you know. Okay. Whoa, something wants to come out of you. A bit of vomit? Thankfully, you keep it down because your body does not control you. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Glad I didn't vomit in front of Clausia. How did you know I'm a police officer? Sir, you've been here for three days on official police business, as you put it. And what business is that? Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Why don't I remember being a cop or anything else? Could it be because of the drinking? Nah. Who in the right mind would let me be an officer of the law? Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. Actually, I can see why they would entrust me with the law. I have the right character. A fondness for contradictory statements? No, in the course of our brief conversation, I have masterly, masterfully suppressed the urge to throw up. This is a sign of professionalism. Thank you, sir. I mean that. Dare, dare I try this? Fuck it, let's see what happens. Try the expression. Let's go! Come on, why are you still doing this? <laughs> let's go, I've only ever seen this fail. Uh, I'm at death's door, bloated, a goner, and still... Does the long does the longing ever stop? Alcohol raises testosterone levels, especially in men. 
The levels remain elevated after inebriation ends and the pain begins. You seek comfort. It's only natural. She oh, puts rational. out her cigarette. Well, you know, could have been worse. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. And now, it never stops. Goodbye. Damn. That was cool. I've never seen that. Looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray still smoking. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. <laughs> Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. The what the now? living shit. Your mesolimbic reward pathway does not mince words. It wants smokes. <laughs> Am I a smoker? <laughs> Who knows what you are? A monster. A murderer. The gnome of Jeroma. You feel like a smoker. Especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub. Still smoldering deliciously. But she broke it at the filter. I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette. Or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Or you could not do that. No one is making you. Wait, wait, all wait, hang on. Yes, I should do that. I should enthusiastically do this, do that. I should not not do that. I'll make it priority one, and well, I'll think about it. Um. Well, I'm gonna chill on the drugs. Well, I'll think about it. Good thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. I don't... Wait, why is this a quest now? I should have discarded the fucking thought. Okay, this is... <laughs> you need to get your hands on some cigarettes and then smoke them. For those massive bonuses. Find a pack, put it in your hand, equip it in the held slot in your inventory, and then smoke, and then the, and the smokes will do the rest. I think I'll pass on this. Just knock on the door, I guess. The door is closed. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Beauty, don't abandon me in all this ugliness. The door does not care. The door probably thinks you're a has-been loser too. You feel your funny necktie becoming tighter and tighter around your neck. Jesus, what is happening here? Is the fucking necktie gonna kill me? Still no answer. Still nothing. You should punch a fucking hole in it. Jesus, no, we're gonna suppress the, the urge. The murmur in your ears recedes slowly. Your breathing normalizes. That's one lucky door. You better remember it too, door. This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trompe le Monde. Okay. <gasps> it's him! Best boy. Nice. Summer door closed for the winter. This is where the lyrics would be. Big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. 
People need to know your vast oceanic soul. They do. My soul is immense. Utterly. And it needs to be heard. So right, bestie. Through a PA system. Yes. By other people. Of course. Whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. <laughs> this goes well with a theory I'm developing. That I'm a down-on-my-luck superstar person. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. What should I sing when it comes to it? You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. I was thinking maybe I could sing something happy, you know, get the people gone. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Oh. Sing the sad song. It's profound. Okay. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. That's true. I never did this in my first playthrough, so I'm gonna have to try to do this. Was I not supposed to, like, strike a pose? This feels right. You belong here. Yeah. It's in karaoke. You need to find a sufficiently tragic tape, then play it on a boombox to memorize the lyrics. Then ask the cafeteria manager to perform. Preferably in the evening, more people at the bar then. Get hold of a sad song on tape. I managed to get the sad song. I don't <coughs> I don't know if I ended up getting the boombox. Hello. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he is purposely ignoring you. Looks like he's not a fan. I sense you're not a fan of mine. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? So not only am I a cop, I'm also a hero? Yes you are. A real decorated hero. What did I do? What did you not do? First you took the body down, then you solved the murder, then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. I'm guessing I didn't do any of those things. You're right, you didn't, and it's only taken you three days not to. What have I been doing all that time? Have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. Look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. What happened to the bird? Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? You mean my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. What's the difference? I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. Where did this Sylvie go? She just, you know... There's something there, and it's not good. That's all you know for now. Okay. The menu has been wiped clean, only the word Monday is written on it. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. That's a fan. Eat that. Door is bolted. A sign reads kitchen reserved for personnel until 13. So, one. A soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. Can't get that yet. A sign reads mess hall reserved for union work members. Doors open 16. This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Lena. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. Alright, dang. 
Hang on. You just talk down here really quick. A man is sleeping at the table wearing mud caked boots and rolled down with the old. Rolled down overalls. The back of his shirt reads wild pines encircled by a logo with a tree. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. He'll be fine. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You gently uh -huh. shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. Damn. He sleep. A bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. All right. Hello. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down, and the whole world descended upon you. This man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? You know, I remember when I first tried to play this game back in 2021, I think, that this line, like this Esprit de Corps line, really stood out to me. I don't know why, but just getting like Kim's character like that, Right at the beginning, in such a was a non sequitur format. I don't know. Really stuck with me. Hold on. Who is he to me? He is your half brother. Shake his hand. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct Fifty Seven. You must be from the Forty First. You realize he's waiting for your name. No, this is a problem. <laughs> this is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get. Creative. Conceptualize. A good thing I have a skill here called conceptualize. Or conceptualization. Concentration. Yes. You squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange. Like a forest fire looming on the horizon. But mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it. But there are still many to go. I, I know what the name is, but we're going to say it's not time yet. Okay, then. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? Yeah, I just talked to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Yes, the police. I am aware I'm a policeman. Right. And the interviews? I haven't. Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Look, man, you know, yeah. <laughs> No. So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. No, it no. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Yeah, you know what? Fair. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. How can you be so sure I'm from the police? I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Uh, Inspectorate General? Internal Affairs. And I'm not them. I'm from Criminal Investigation. You said insignia. These white rectangles, you mean? Yes. But they're just white rectangles. They're not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Ravachol West. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. Shouldn't I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? It was not on me when I woke up. 
Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. But I can't remember anything. I can see you drank last night and the night before, <clears throat> and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. A painkiller would be good about now. This thing is pulsating with discomfort. The best cure for a headache is, of course, morphine. They won't have that. So cigarettes... <laughs> Jesus Christ. What were we supposed to do again? Talk to the manager. Then we go out back and take the body down. Okay, what if I told you I'm not really we a police officer? That way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. True. But first, we have to take it down. Let's roll. After you, officer. We got... Report the missing badge so I can get chewed out by my colleagues. Interview guard and inspect the thing. Yep, easy enough. I'm, I don't need to go over this, but, you know. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Precinct 41. What is gold and orange like a forest fire but smells like liquor? Are you kidding me? Nah, man. Help me out. What is gold and orange and smells like liquor? It's you. It's obviously you. You smell like liquor. And you're orange. See? Everyone agrees it's your color scheme. <laughs> We're on the right track with this name thing. Okay, let's go. Is this what you get when you call the police now? We've been waiting for a week here. Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. For a moment, the cafeteria manager fidgets under the lieutenant's gaze. Then he gives in. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. Yes. I have everything. You? Oh, you mean, do I have questions? Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? Where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. How do we get there? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's implied in his voice. Hey, who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. Suddenly you tense up. Blood is being pushed to your muscles. You should hound him on this. Hound him hard. The prey drive says. The prey drive. I'm not going to hound him on this. Oh, thank you. So why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. This is the second time you've avoided the subject. Oh my god. What is your obsession with this Sylvie person? 
Get over it. Maybe it's he who's obsessed with this Sylvie person. Certainly sounds like it. That's all. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. No one is saying the multi pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. But. Let's bail! Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility! You don't like those! It's real. Uh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Oh, I understand. You mean I owe you money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right. Money. You owe this establishment 130 real. Who does that clown think he is? Arrest him! Did I just hear my Thai speak to me twice? No one is saying that! No one is saying that Thai can talk! That would be ludicrous! It's just that you should arrest him! It would be wiser! He wants to take your money! Great advice, I'm considering it. The lieutenant looks at you tugging on your garish tie. He puts his hand on your shoulder. If you don't have the money, it's okay. None of us are in this for the wages. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. What do I owe this place for? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. What exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? Well, since I woke up, I have trouble. No, actually, I might be. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Interesting. Where do I get it from? <laughs> are you serious? From your work? I don't know. You can take bribes, I guess. I'm sorry. I don't think cops can take bribes. Some do take recompense, but only to survive. Why do I need it? For survival, to pay me. Unless you want to become a hobo. Do you want to become a hobo? <laughs> There's nowhere else to stay in Martinez, and it's a cold spring outside. Money doesn't make you happy, but it lets you be unhappy for a while longer. If you run out of money, you die. It's like that for all of us. Me too. That's why I need you to pay me. I'm not an asshole. Is this money? Yes, it is. Keep There's money. a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. I'm now. sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... I just die. Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Isn't there somewhere else I can stay around here? You mean somewhere else to run up a huge debt? I don't think so. The union squeezed most places out of business to fund the strike. You're better off home. I don't remember where my home is. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them. Ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. Good luck. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I really don't remember. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. I don't know, near? South, maybe? You don't really know, do you? I have only a vague, blackened image. A vague, blackened image doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. 
I don't want to be hobo cop. Could I trace the way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number on a building? You could try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Oh, I got a first thought. Um, figure out who made the call. Pay for damage. Own some long way home. Let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through courtyards, scaring little children. Go under the great raised motor tract, the 881, until you reach Le Domaine Eminent in North Jamrock. The streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition, the side alley there, and your footprints in the mud. Might as well start internalizing it. Six hours, huh? Alright. Get this investigation underway. Oh, wait, we gotta talk to Lena. Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's Sweetie? Why, you are, officer. Hmm, maybe I am. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? Oh. I don't know, maybe I have. You rascal. I'm too old for you, and too married besides. Your advances haven't thrown her off one bit. In another place and time, she would have probably welcomed your attention. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just Fucking down the Gary. street. But I come here for tea when they're away. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her. You seem to be in a chair. I'm not gonna. F How would you like to roll with me? I'm not gonna say either of those things. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am <laughs> or what I'm doing or anything. Uh, I'll just get money from Joyce. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed, like a stunned fox, but surely things can't be that bad. Hope you're right. I hope it's not too bad. You know where we are, right? We're dead haunting Jesus. A war zone at the edge of the world. Ew, we'll just say the whirling in rags. That's right. And where is the whirling in rags cafeteria itself located? See, I have no idea. We're in the city of Repshol, dear. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Repshol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Repshol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Repshol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Ah, uh, it's the spring of 51. That's right, dear. Yes. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Aww. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there. But now she relaxes her shoulders. Good thing I, hit, I looked at that calendar. Outside, the melting snow seeps into the cracks in the walls and the cobblestone streets, all the way down into the sewers. Above ground, the first May bells blossom. You can feel it, a great cold. Then the shiver passes. Hmm. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Uh, let's see, some kind of democracy, maybe. I'd like to think it's a dictatorship of the proletariat, but something tells me it's not. Our leaders are fierce warriors who traverse the plains on steeds. Civilization cowers before us. We are governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Radios are being used to control people's minds and distort our perception of reality, concealing our true masters. Foreigners and women. 
Cop. We are living under the cop regime. I'm just going to pick the communist option. Oh, sweetie. It's really not. There used to be people who thought that way. Other people who wanted those things, but they all went extinct. Revishol is a zone of control led it's by an alliance sad, by of the way. foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, and certainly no dictatorship of the proletariat. But they still have cops. If there's no government, how come there are cops? Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. So, how did I do? You were doing quite well up until the end there. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word. It's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary. So I, I wouldn't worry too much. She means this sincerely. Worrying won't do you any good. What is the revolution you mentioned? A uh, defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. But I'm a cop. Whatever it was hasn't stopped me. Of course, sweetie. I, I really don't know how to explain it better. I'm just a poor woman, she thinks. What do I know of these things? And how can I help you? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. To Joyce. I've got to get going now. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. So sweet. Okay. I got it. I got my... got the apple. Pen with a green ape head on one end. Uh, the ape has closed its eyes, a kind expression adorning its face. It seems to be meditating. Also, I don't know why I said apple. I think I just misread ape. The reality lowdown. You have no idea where you are. Lena encourages you to ask others to explain the world to you in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich person. Rich people are educated. Yep. This thing. Rue de saint gelaine ape B. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is Oh, I know what this is. Let's go. Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships, <clears throat> clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Your shirt sticks to your chest. The shoulders of your disco blazer grow heavy. The cold finds its way in under your skin. You shiver, and the city shivers with you. You're not dressed for this weather. You should get an overcoat or a patrol cloak. What is in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Will I? No, 
You are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. What is down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. <gasps> the church. Beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Run your fingers through your dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. What is in the east? There's a fleet on the corner. A plastic coat is folded into a small triangle under the counter by the window. Beyond that, the strike breakers have gathered. The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Then your teeth stop shuddering. Behind the gates, heaps of supply carts, <coughs> red and blue metal shipping containers, slick with rain. The greater Revachol industrial harbor is an artificial mountain range. Immense wealth resides within and immeasurable poverty in its shadow. And beyond that? La Jusienne, King Dries Passenger Harbor. Cruise ships flanked by dock arms, cranes watching over the mouth of the river distributary. What is across to the distributary? Kuron, the lower middle class. Distributary after distributary cuts the city blocks in half. Seven story buildings trail off into the rain. What is beyond the Kuron? A silvery curtain of rain over the houses. The class divide. Me... A fr the great gates of behind the gates. Yeah, before that. You, on the Martinez Plaza, a small dot looking up at the sky. Droplets form on your eyelashes. La Jusienne, Kuron. Okay. The, a silvery yeah. curtain of rain over the houses. The class divide. What is in the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. And closer to here? A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree, bloated. Droplets of rain slip from his cold cheeks. What's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. What is Jamrock? Revachol is the capital of the world. Jamrock is the capital of Revachol. Droplets form on your eyelashes. It's home. <laughs> what a ho, what a ho, what a ho that. I have a brother in the club. <laughs> Where the who that? <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> Oh, uh, why am I not there? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution failed. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. Where do I live? On a street there that flows like a muddy river in the snow with fire traps rising on either side. A film rental opens its doors to the rain. An armored motor carriage rushes past the corner where you used to walk together. Suddenly, the hair on your back rises. 
You cannot return. Damn. Shudder, look further. In the rain-swept distance above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Satellite officer Jean Vichmer rushes down the precinct stairs, umbrella in hand. It's unopened. He doesn't seem pleased about the spring rain. On the bridge, officers Torson and McLean are standing guard. Torson wears jeans and a fishnet wife beater. Satellite officer Vikmir passes by, and the young man remarks to him. Where's your homo, homie? <laughs> what? It's not like that. They're what is called heterosexual life partners. They have a battle-tested relationship. A, a blood bond, if you will. Jeez, this is like some war shit. Huh? Yeah. Hetero, sexual, life, partners. Funny apery. Male-centric workplace humor. Have you seen him? Is there something wrong? No, nothing. It's just... Judith went to his place and found the Monday mail unopened. I think he's still there. You didn't like. Drink with him over the weekend, did you? That would be irresponsible. With that animal? Never again, man. What is he, still down there? In, you know, south of the interchange? The... what was it? In Martinez. He's in Martinez. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. I mean, I never, I never did shivers last time. I think my fucking physical stat was like a two. So this is all new to me. This is great. I mean, not the, not the fucking DMX joke. I knew about that already because it's kind of hard to hide that kind of meme. But the rest of this is new and it's wonderful. What's above? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. Motherfucker. This rain will not let up anytime soon. You should get a raincoat. There's a freight to the east. They sell them there. Bro, I need to pay for my fucking room. I will say, one of my favorite things about this game um and the world that was created is it it's just so wonderfully cosmopolitan and it feels very organically done like whenever you see the way something looks or you hear the way someone talks or even just the names of things it feels they're all like a mishmash of different like cultures from our real world but they don't feel random it feels like that they were named some way because they have some cultural and historical relevance in the world like you know some people lived here and they're from all over the world and they brought their culture and their history with them and that ended up having an effect on the area around them and so that's why things are named the way they are or that's why people you know have accents the way they do I mean, I've never really seen anything like this. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's that feels as organically cosmopolitan as this game does. It's really, it's pretty cool. Um, I think I'm just gonna level up Shivers. Uh, I do I not have a point? No, I don't. That was just a glitch. Okay. Cool. All right, let's just this, and then uh. There are bottles inside. You can pick them up if you had a bag. I don't have a bag. Let's, uh... Body detail. <laughs> smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. There are several footprints in the mud. Left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. What kind of boots? Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Lieutenant, workers' boot tracks. Noted. Uh, I'm gonna fucking fail this. 
Jesus. What do you think you are? Jesus. A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. I would like to do some points in visual calculus just to see the um Um, just to see the, uh, like, recre reconstructed crime scenes. Kids' ladder's rickety, but still climbable. Ladders for kids, it wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. I'm just trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Take all. Magnesium. And some cash. Some coin. This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Okay, let's uh... Look at the corpse. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. It's okay to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! Let go of your nose without throwing up. The Ooh. smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Try to walk it out, or walk away. Yeah. Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. God. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. Thanks. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. You think ammonia would help? If you can handle the headache. Some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. But not you? I can't handle the headache. It's more likely he can handle the smell. Unlike you. Okay, where do we get ammonia from? There is Fritz nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't, there's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Um, do I want to talk to Kuno right now? Not really. <laughs> I think I'll pass on Kuno for a second. <clears throat> the handkerchief given to you by Lieutenant Kitsuragi. One corner is, indor is adorned with lace and a tiny embroidered portier. Or portier. I don't know, I'm not French. Hello. Hello, Miss Gardner. I'd like to speak with you. A heap of snow melts in this wheelbarrow. Sign, street sign reads, Fuck the police. A little A-cabby out here. Pigs go home. The street name is, in, in a, is illegible. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. I have some questions for you. Of course. What my, can I help you with? My partner told me you may have ammonia. Can I have some? Sure. I'm done with it. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. We need directions. Of course. Where to? Where am I? What do you mean? I'm a bit disoriented. This is Revishal, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. What is up in the north? 
There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. In the east. The harbor gate. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. What's in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. What is on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. Rows of stalls under a broad roof where silvery fish were heaped on newspapers. Water, water everywhere, pouring from the heavens in the shadow of the old church. What kind of a fish market is this? I don't know. The abandoned kind? It used to gather every spring, but there's nothing to do there now. Just drug addicts. It's in the west. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. That's all for now. I do like that this is basically just a simplified version of what you hear from Shivers, or what I heard in Shivers just now, but there's like some more detailed information that you don't get from Shivers. No problem. What is this fuck the police business? Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. This street sign says fuck the police. Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. Alright, I didn't mean to startle you. Okay. I have to run. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. One more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. Thank you. We'll say her turning out to be a fucking boy or whatever it was turning coat was very disorienting. First time. Thin glass too wrapped in cotton netting. Used to treat fainting spells produced by Saint Batiste Pharmaceuticals. Ample of ammonia. Yeah, gloves. Thick latex gardening gloves in classic canary yellow. Maybe you should retire. Take up gardening as a hobby. It's worth a thought. Interfacing. Bye bye, bugs. Okay. Start working on this body. There he still is, looking right through you with his white mm. eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Mm. Emitting it is all it does now. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Oof. The bone you didn't help at all. Now does the win right now. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. Not being hungover helps too. This is bullshit. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a cop. Okay, you've said it. You needed to see it. And now that you have, you need to get your shit together. Okay. You should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Must 
equip and complete volumetric shit compressor. Alright, Kuno. Kuno's got this. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno. Hey kid, a word, police business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. It's loving in the dick. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Hold on, what does that mean? The kid is obviously high. Stop getting high at my crime scene. Fuck that! Kuno, yeah, right in the mouth hole! They pay you no heed or pretend not to notice you. Shits himself? The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. Him, what should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. See what you mean? We've got little choice here. Just take it easy. You kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? He's calling us f Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. <laughs> what? Kid, you wanna hang out? I'm not a narc. Fuck no, Kuno doesn't buy that shit. Fucking entrapment shit. Look, I have questions for you. Alright, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The body, what do you know about it? Shitload pig, what's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Him, help me out here. What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not. I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. You know who he was? Kuno's fuck imp. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target practice. End of conversation. Very strong. You should be this stoic. Do you know how it got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happen? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. Oh, okay, where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking mesk or, or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. Where is Night City? Kuno gives this info out on a need to know basis, and you don't need to know. <laughs> Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. More on this later. Right now, let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience, yeah? Get lost. F about the crime scene, you kids often play in this yard. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo choo. What do you want with it? The ladder. Ever climb it? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. So you would say that the ladder is unclimbable. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. Not a fucking acrobat. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! What's in the greenhouse over there? Dunno. Keep that gardener used to work there. Hold on, the gardener used to work there? Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit's nothing to Kuno. Wait, what did you mean by... Uh, I don't know if I should say that. It's not real. <laughs> Look I it up take in my the chances. library. Kuno's not a fucking dictionary. Fucking small brain. Kuno means the gardener, all right? You mean the young woman by whirling in rags, that gardener? Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. Yeah, her. Might have questions later. For now, let's talk about something else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Uh, I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? Kuno. Primal. Violent. Sounds like something you'd call a rabid dog. Yeah, think about it. Think about that rabid Kuno shit. He seems glad someone understood what he was going for. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's going to put his hands on you! Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Help! He's got the Kuno! 
Bruno help! Everybody, please! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! <laughs> Pigs in it in, Kuno! Somebody, please! I'm not gonna punch Kuno. What is this sick no! charade? <laughs> Get up, Kuno, you sick fat fuck! Who put you up to this? No one. Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. This is where Kuno establishes dominance over you. Help! The pig's gagging him! Kuno can't speak! Someone put you up to this. You put him up to this yourself when you decided to talk to him in the first place. Listen to your friend. Did Gart put you up to this? Kuno owns the fat ass. Help! The RCM is trying to fuck Kuno! Are you high right now? Help! Misters, help! Rolling super hard. He's having the time of his life. Total ecstasy. Fuck the pig. He's splashing Kuno? He's showing his genitals? If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late. I'm gonna punch Look. him. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that, I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. The rage look. How do you know that? You can't see inside my head. Can you read my mind, Kuno? I can. Kuno can smell that violent shit. I know what you were thinking. I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up. I'm gonna shut his shit down. You know what? You should have hit the Kuno, because now you're nothing. You're a joke to Kuno. Kuno laughs at you. King Kuno! Backing up was a bad idea. Now he thinks he's established dominance over you. Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch. You're going to be in this shit with Kuno. No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're going to be in this shit with Kuno forever. Okay. Kuno is kind to his bitch. Ask your questions, but remember, this changes shit. Click, 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 click! <laughs> Back down from Kuno. Well. The fuck well, about it? Okay, no. Get lost! Yeah? The kingdom. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Uh. uh. Yeah, like a fucking volcano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking pathetic. You were lucky you didn't die there. Maybe you got some advice for me. I mean, you are obviously handling it, handling it quite well. Yeah. Kuno's got some advice for you. What are you? Like, 80, right? Maybe you should stop embarrassing yourself in front of a fucking kid. He's right. He's spitting. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Here we go. Volumetric shit compressor. <clears throat> Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit's singularity lasts. Cool. All right. Let's see the body again. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. They always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. 
its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor, possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? They're armor. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more armor after seven days. We should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. What? Why does my mortal coil need protecting? Yes, bullets will fly. They always do. And the coil is fleshy and mush and permeable. Cast it in ceramic shell. Resist death. Maybe he was just wearing these boots and there is no rest of the armor? No. He must have worn something precious underneath his clothes. They've removed all his clothes to get to it. They did not just strip him for the putrid rags. Then where are these clothes? Have you seen any around? Someone could have cleaned the yard. But that's a question for the red-haired thing. I hear you, cop. Talking shit about the Kuno. Come here and say it to Kuno's face. Fuck you, you Kuno. fuck me, huh? You wanna fuck the Kuno? What if they told him to strip before they hung him, to demean him? They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmertis, and the like. This one still has his underpants. Oh. What? Are you trying to ignore me now, fuckface? You know this boot shit is super boring and the guys are total vitupas. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary is deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Ka-ching, baby. By catching, do you mean let's not log them as evidence? Let's steal them? No, that's not what I meant. Of course. How could they? That's totally what I meant. <laughs> no, I'm gonna fucking wear those. Are you kidding me? How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbor Company. But that's just hearsay. Initial report? Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. Mm hmm He's not actually sure of that. He's just being tactful. These look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Suddenly, your biceps coil up. Your elbow is sharp and cocked for a punch. I'm not gonna punch it. Actually, I am. Your fist connects to the boot with the same ding. The sound does not appear to get louder. Did you hear that? A click? Yes, like dice roll. This is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads the incoming energy horizontally from plate to plate. When the plates connect, there's a click. That's the sound you heard. See these lines? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Pull the boot off. This feels dangerous. Grab the boot are on you your sure? Arm. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. Oh, brutal! Oh, 
This is a bad idea, isn't it? You're going to pull his head off. Do it, homo! I'll pull his head off, right? Yes, that's what I said. You'll compromise the coroner's case if you do. So please, don't. What are you trying to achieve, anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? These boots would go super well with my bell-bottom pants. This is advanced enemy technology. We should conduct research into the weaknesses. Are we not detectives? Is it they're expensive? I thought I'd say. Maybe, clues Maybe we should concentrate boot. on what's outside the boot and leave what's inside to the boys at processing. Just this once. Besides, there's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? You're sure there's a way to peel them off. But first, the body needs to be down. And second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Sounds like a plan. The anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Feels nice. Nice and cracky. What happened to the boots then? Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fight. Should we continue? The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Spec the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. <clears throat> Oh my, there's something on the belt. A familiar word that speaks to the thirst within you. Vermilion, in yellow letters, along the length of the twisting cargo belt. Only a deep longing for vermilion golden spirits lets you decipher the fading logo of the local brewery. This is a bad time for a drink, right? Extremely. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. The can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a harbor? Yes, it looks like they use whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it. The brief suggested as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? My past has undergone total annihilation. Nothing remains. My mother, the love of my life, certainly not a briefing. Okay, you should ask me for one the first moment we get. They sure wanted him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. How did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Can they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the bell to close the buckle. Back off, look the corpse. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. Inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Damn. Your fist clenches suddenly. It will be riddled with disco. Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular, customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium 
from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A true get sunshine. Mini. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, Kim. Your mechanic stuff. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by. His mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper. Teeming with opportunistic organisms. Ugh. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world. Protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home. Just sub-aquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Tell me, who are you, dead man? The corpse no! is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Dude, I lo What? I fucking rolled two ones, are you serious? Fuck. Was that a white check? Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. The corpse looks right through you I'm as doing you that distance again. yourself from its stench. Eyes like a shark. I'm going to take a step back. I thought as talking to the corpse was like one of my favorite parts of this. The monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I'm squinting, Kim. What am I? Why am I doing it? How should I know why you are squinting, officer? His face and hands are pink. Thighs too. The rest is greenish. Oh. <laughs> you are trying to assess lividity. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So what do you think? Something's coming out of him. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. <laughs> we are lucky. Did we? I don't feel lucky. I think he's dead. I agree. Totally dead. Deadly dead dead. Dabba doob doob dead. <laughs> I don't know what to think. What do you think? I think he was upright immediately after death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet, and his neck. The noose acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis here is in tune with the hanging. That's what I think. Could it be? Could it still be he was moved after death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal-like. But there is no breath to catch. 
Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. So how do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Back and have another look first. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoo. Okay, well, no, I want to do the Inland Empire thing. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Lieutenant, what do you think could be in there? Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence too. Yes, I feel like there's something in there. What do you mean, feel? It's extrasensory perception. Whatever is in there holds a special significance. I agree. We should get someone from the remote viewers division here. What is the remote viewers division? All the detectives from all the precincts who experience extrasensory perception go to the remote viewers division. <laughs> Their work is invaluable to the force. What kind of extra natural abilities do they possess? None, because they don't exist. I'm so disappointed right now. I thought there was a remote viewers division. There isn't, but we should still access this container. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. Yeah. Letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. Okay, back to talk to Gaunt. Hello, Gaunt. Can I help you? Is the trash container out back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Prod at him and find out. Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revishol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Kras Mazov, nom de guerre, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Grad side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism, Mazovian thought, or Mazovianism. Yum yum, tell me more. He killed himself. Maybe I am Krasmasov. What are we talking about? Was this not about the trash container? No, wait. What if I am Krasmasov? We should return to the case of your mistaken identity at a later time, officer. This was about the trash container. We need those keys. What for? Mazov? Are you planning to nationalize my trash container? Yep. It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. Hell yeah, brother. That are you snap this Two lines stretching across his torso you have to admit it looks quite cool yes into the trash can
This trash container is with a well-oiled crack. The lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Didn't I just have a premonition that said that there's something in there? There is, but you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand is still on the lid. The smell of rotten food nice. rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below and turbo noodles. Ooh, Nothing of note. Turbo however. noodles. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. As the legs of the slime covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverine odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Guitar mark blue jeans. Pockets empty or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too, a white belt. The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib-knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... Thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right, we should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. The fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? You think someone from the Whirling might have been involved, maybe? Not really. All we know is, the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Okay. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge, and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes. Written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? I don't know what this is. It is. Look. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. Uh, I must have been cramping myself. Officer, this is an official piece of paperwork. It probably contains notes on numerous ongoing investigations and could even list undercover operatives, informants. I suggest integrating it into your style for all our sakes. Okay, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? The mug. I'm getting that mug too. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Pick them up. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm not to a contain racist. The sounds of muffled gong. Gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. Okay. Uh, 
this shit. Ledger, got the mug. I'm gonna save the game. And I'm gonna end the stream. 11 o'clock. That was a good two hour stream.